Hi, my name's Dan. Um, this video is one in a series that I'm doing on uh, collision, uh, collision detection and collision responses in Unreal. Um, and in this one, I'm going to talk about collision events, uh, which are the, the events that are triggered when you have collisions. Okay. So the setup I've got here is a third person template map. And I've got a couple of objects in here. I've got a ball. Uh, which was just created using the sphere, and then I turned it into a blueprint. And a box, uh, which is this box here, again, I just turned it into a blueprint. That's because I want to put scripts inside to respond to the, the events. Um, now, one of the uh, advantages of just clicking turn into blueprint on these is that it means that actually the objects are uh, inside them. The static meshes are fully exposed here for me to... Uh, be able to get to the physics on the collision settings. Uh, if you create your own your own uh, blueprint with a static mesh in it, you have to open up the uh, blueprint to uh, to get to it. If you're just creating a normal actor, uh, but it's uh, yeah, the difference is only slight there. Um, I just went with this way for convenience. So um, this has been set to simulate physics. Uh, this ball so that when you play it should fall down and bounce off that box and there we go okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open both of these up um well one at a time and i'm going to put in some stuff that responds to events um, and as i said at the top there are, there are two types of events that you can get uh, as a result of uh, collisions uh, you can either have a a block uh, which is where two objects hit and then bounce off each other or just don't let them uh, go through. Uh, or you can have an overlap if they've been set so that the, um, they're insubstantial, but you want to detect when they overlap. And there are two different events depending on which one you, you're going to have. So the the one where they're blocking is a hit event. Uh, so just use event hit there. And the one where you're colliding is on actor uh, begin overlap. Um, and I wonder why that's giving me event actor begin overlap. That's what I wanted. Okay, so you see that the information that you get in the actor begin overlap is what the other actor is, and you don't have any other information from there. And uh, if you've followed along with some of my other videos, you'll see me use this one quite a lot. Uh, this one is uh, has more information. And uh, when you get a hit, it has uh, this extra information and more, and I'll quickly show you through that. We're not actually going to use the information. What I'm wanting to explore is how to make these events happen and just seeing when they happen and when they don't happen. Um, so this is, uh, if you've got an object with several components in, which often happens with blueprints, this is the component which has been hit. Uh, this is the other object that is uh, in the collision. Um, and this is the components of the other object that's been in the collision. So you'll have a, a collision happens when two parts of one part of one object touches one part of the other object. Um, and if they're multi parts, then, uh, then that's how you can find out which part. Uh, self moved, uh, that's um, if, if it is this object that has been moved uh, to, uh, uh, has been in motion, I believe. Uh, the hit location. So if you imagine these uh, two objects hitting, there is a point of contact where they'll be hitting, and this gives you that point of contact. Uh, the hit normal then tells you the direction of the contact. And this is useful if you want to do your own calculations in terms of bouncing or any other kind of effects that you might want in there. And similarly, uh, the, the impulse tells you how much force has been applied and in what direction. These all three are vectors. Um, if vectors confuse you, I do have a series of uh, videos on using vectors in Unreal. Go seek them out. They might help you. And then the bottom one here is hit, which is a, um, uh, a structure. And if we drag off that and do break, we get more information. In fact, we just seem to have a couple of things here. Blocking hit, initial overlap. But if we drop down that, that arrow there, you'll see there's time, distance, there's some of the same information that you had over here, because that's been pulled out and replicated. Um, but there's more information if you were wanting it. I'm not going to go through those. Okay. 
what we're actually going to do is we're just going to have a, a message appear when we have a hit. Uh, this is, which are we in? We're in the ball. We're going to do this for the ball and for the box and the character as well. So I'm just going to do a print string, and I'm going to say that a hit has happened. Hit on ball. Um, and if we get an overlap, we're going to do print string. Overlap on the ball. Okay. Uh, compile that. And then we're going to do the same in the box. So we need to open the Blueprint Editor. And again, we want a hit event. And uh, over that. And print string. And this is the box. So it's hit on the box. And um, print string overlap box. And just for good measure, as I said, we're going to do this on the character as well. So we're going to get into the uh, the third person character. And we don't want to be in the construction script, just in the event graph here. And we do hit events. That's not what I wanted. Hit. And hit on character. And actor begin overlap. Uh, overlap character. I don't think we'll be using this one. Actually, that's not what we want. We want a uh, print string. Getting ahead of myself. Overlap character. I know I've got extra capital H's in there. I really don't care. Uh, that's what I mean. So, with the settings that we've got, standard settings, just let's uh, play this and see what happens. No ball hits. Okay, hit on box, hit on character. So the character's hit in the box. And now we're getting a hit on ball and a hit on character. So sometimes we're getting the hit on ball. We're not getting the hit on ball when it hits the box. We're getting interaction between the character and the box happening. Let's go into our uh, blueprints and um, have a look at the settings here. So this is set, uh, set to simulate physics and in the collision. Uh, simulation generates uh, hit events. Slide that across. That's not been set to generate hit events. So let's set the ball so that it will generate hit events. And as it hits the box, it's getting the hit event, but the box isn't. Um, for some reason, though, and I can't figure out why, the character manages to trigger the hit on ball events, even when it's not set to, to um, generate them. So I wonder if that's being generated in a different way rather than through the, the physics simulation. And there's loads of those being generated. As it's rolling along the floor, you can see that it keeps generating hit events all the time as it rolls, uh, as the physics simulation is going on. I'm hoping it's going to come to a stop and we'll see an end to those. Any time now. Go on. Might have to give up. Next one. Has it gone to rest yet? Almost. Oh, I believe we're waiting for this ball to stop. Surely now it's come to a stop. We're still getting those events. Okay. All right, so let's ignore that. Um, <clears throat> we're going to set the box now so that it will generate hit events. Um, and we're going to 
take the ball and remove that. Uh, right here to Nance. So hopefully this means the box will respond to the ball, but the ball won't respond to the box. Yeah, hits on box. Lots of hits on box. And that stopped because it stopped bouncing. Um, because the character can do it. The ball rolling across the surface. It gives hits on box. Or if it's still touching, so it's actually giving uh, continuous hits on that. So we can move it away, that stop. There we go. Right, now we want to do uh, overlap uh, and test that. So we can see, you, um, if you set the simulation generates hit events, you get the hit event in the object that you've set it on, uh, and not in the other one, if it's doing it through the physics. The character seems to be a special case where it will generate those hit events regardless. Um, and I confess I don't know where the setting is to, to set that or what's happening there. Um, but now we're going to go back into this box, and we're going to um, uh, make it uh, not... Generate overlap events. Actually, that's the ball. I make the box uh, drop through. So it's got collision presets default, and I'm going to change that to overlap ball. Oh, missed. Overlap ball. And then play it, and the ball should drop inside it. We haven't had an overlap event. Um, and the reason for that is because uh, we haven't got overlap events selected. So the collision uh, generates overlap events, starts with the box. So if it behaves like the hit events, it should give us an overlap event here on the box, but not on the ball. Let's see what happens. It doesn't. Actually, I knew this was going to happen, um, which is why I'm demonstrating it. And if we select the ball and also select generate overlap events, let's play, then we get an overlap event for both of them. That isn't continuous like the, the ball kind of bouncing off and, and rolling it is. It, it's obviously it's a one-off, as it? Generates the overlap events. Uh, we've got the hits on ball and the hits on character there, still going. And if I try and roll that back through the box, we should generate another overlap event. There we go, overlap on box, overlap on ball. So hit events, you only need to have one uh, of the two if it's been done using physics, and it will pick up the hit event inside that uh, blueprint. Uh, for overlap, you need both objects to be set to generate overlap events before you get those overlap events. Um, and those two nodes that we saw, they're the nodes um, that you need to use to respond to these events. And um, all we've got is print string uh, responses. You can do all sorts of things in here. Anyway, that's it from me for now.